All right, I will go ahead and get started. Again, my name is Scott Carlberg. I am the manager of uh, product marketing at Yaskawa America. And today we are going to talk about a new product launch uh, that we've been working on for quite a long time, food grade and hygienic stainless motors that we're going to be uh, releasing with our Sigma 7 amplifiers. So I am going to just give you an overview of this product, um, talk about uh, the specific Sigma 7 servo packs that we're going to be using and the cabling, talk about the sales tools that we have available, and then the stock and delivery of these products. So let's uh, start off with the food grade motors. So these are uh, your typical white painted, food grade white, epoxy coating, IP66 food grade motors. These are typically seen in food processing type applications, but most of the time it's gonna be, you know, a little bit further down the line than the processing part of a food manufacturing line when you're doing your cartoning or your the labeling or the case packing, that sort of thing. Um, you'll see a lot of times you'll have these uh, food grade white motors. Again, IP66 sealing, which means a high pressure wash down. We've got UL, CE, and ROHS compliance. Stainless steel shaft is kind of the norm on these motors. We are releasing four frame sizes of these, 200 volt and 400 volt. There's a brake option. Um, we're using the standard Hyperface Absolute Encoder. These are motors that we're buying and reselling from a wood corporation uh, up in Wisconsin, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in the next couple slides. These motors are designed specifically for these types of applications that I just mentioned, specifically for food packaging, baking packaging, that sort of thing. And I have a part number breakdown over here on the right. So these are your four frame sizes right here, 1.4 newton meters up to 25 newton meters continuous. Again, a break, breaker and non-break, those are your options, 200 or 400 volt, and then that's it basically. And then we're also we're launching uh, these hygienic stainless motors. Now these are a complete stainless design from the shaft all the way to the housing and everything is stainless for maximum corrosion resistance. You've got a smooth finish, which is typical of these types of motors just so you don't have, there's, there are no areas on the motor where little bits of food or, or anything can get trapped on the motor. It's just smooth, so everything will kind of just wash right off of it. It has two IP ratings, IP66 and also IP69, 69K sealing. Uh, so a little bit more uh, protection from water and dust ingress. Uh, the EH EDG is a standard specific to the food and beverage and uh, you know the, the food market basically. If you're, if you're making any of these types of um, foods or if you're doing any this type of food processing, you, you have most likely heard of this standard. And then we've also got the, the UL, CE, and ROHS certifications as well. So this one has currently has two frame sizes. There are another two, two frame sizes in development, but for now we're launching these first two frame sizes, the 2.4 newton meters and the 3.2 newton meters continuous. And these kind of hit 70 to 80% of the applications you're gonna see for these types of motors. So we think this will be a pretty good offering um, to start off with. We have 200 volt and 400 volt windings of those. Again, you have a brake option, same hyperface encoder. And again, these are specifically made for food and beverage processing, packaging, anything related to a food line. Now for the amplifiers, these are the standard Sigma 7 amplifiers and we're adding a feedback option card. And I know many of you in our channel um, are familiar with the feedback option card. Right now, the way we use this card, when you want to work with a third party motor, uh, you, you get together with one of our uh, regional motion engineers and they create a parameter file specifically for the encoder based on the motor that you're connecting to. And then um, you're good to go. Well, what we've done with these specific food grade motors and stainless motors, we've done all that work up front. So each of these motor part numbers, and this is the full list of food grade and stainless part numbers, each one will have a corresponding amplifier uh, Y mod number. At Yaskawa, we, we call these Y mod suffixes. These are, for anything non-standard, we add a Y and then some, some numbers behind it, we call it a Y mod. Um, so it's just a, it's basically just a custom amplifier that is specific to this motor. And so right now we have uh, set up the, the standard Mechatronic 3, the EtherCat, the Sigma 7 SIEC, and the Sigma Logic Compact amplifiers. And each one has a specific Y mod that goes along with the specific uh, motor part number. 
And so that this chart that you're seeing right here, this is also in um, our product literature. It's up on the website, which I'll show you. And it is configured in uh, OPT. When you pick one of these motors in, in the online pricing tool, it will give you the correct amplifier that's specific to that motor. So motor cabling, took a couple pictures of some motor samples that we have. The stainless motor has got three meter cables that come off of the motor and are terminated in this, in this little cylindrical plug. Uh, and then we have extension cables, which you can see up here in uh, three meters up to 20 meters, uh, which you can add on to those plugs to get a, a longer length of those cables. On the white, white painted food grade motors, your, the extension cables are just gonna plug right into the connectors on the motor, as you can see here. And these are just, these are what the extension cables look like down here. Uh, the power cable, this was an early version of the power cable. The, the version that we are going to be shipping will have little ring terminals on it that will interface directly to our um, amplifier. The little terminals that, that interface with our amplifier. And then the encoder cable comes with, uh, it, on the amplifier side, it comes with the plug that specifically plugs right into the feedback option card. So there's no like any kind of weird interface wiring that you have to deal with. You just, the cable just plugs right into our amplifier. Cables are IP66, just like the motors. They're shielded. Um, and again, three to 20 meters for the extension cables. Um, I, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, so these motors are manufactured by uh, Elwood Corporation. And the motors are going to have the Elwood nameplate on them. Again, we are buying and reselling these motors. It, there's no confusion about this. These are not Yaskawa motors, um, but we have done uh, a considerable amount of testing with these motors uh, along with the Sigma 7 amplifiers. We're very confident that, you know, these are going to work wonderfully in applications. We actually do, we actually have integrated these into a number of applications already in our pre-launch phase. Uh, so very confident about the system that we're going to be selling. And I think it's going to go a long way in helping us penetrate into uh, more packaging customers, more food processing type customers. The other thing is I wanted to show you on the, uh, the white painted food grade motors, the connectors are rotatable. So you can, you can kind of rotate these in any orientation that you want, which is kind of nice. The stainless connectors are fixed at the top of the motor here and they just come out perpendicular to the motor. There's one gotcha at launch that I'm just going to mention now, which will be temporary. Um, but right now with the current version of amplifier firmware, the amplifier does not have the ability to sense the halls on the motor for the initial commutation. So um, the first time that you power up the motor, uh, you have to do a little polarity detection procedure, a little wake and shake type procedure to align the encoder properly with the amplifier. Once that's done, you, can, you don't have to do it again. You just kind of move forward. We have a short little e-learning video. It's up on YouTube. I have it linked to this uh, presentation. Uh, which I'll make available after the webinar. You can just click on this and you can go to the video. We also have an application note in the Solution Center, which is shown right here. I've got a link to that Solution Center applications note right here as well. Once you download the, uh, this presentation, you'll, you'll have a link to that. Again, this is temporary. We're working with the mothership in Japan to make a small revision to the firmware on the amplifier so that we can accommodate through these motors and not have this polarity detection. But for now, this is something uh, customers will have to do when they first start up the, the system. As far as sales tools go, we have a couple here. We've got this the Sigma 7 technical supplement, uh, which many of you are probably already familiar with. It's our main catalog for Sigma 7. We've been using this since Sigma 7 was introduced, I don't know, six, seven years ago. Um, so we just added the, the food grade motors and the stainless motors to that. So you'll see those in there if you download the latest copy, which is up on the website right now. We also have uh, the motion brochure. It's just our general brochure that shows all of the motion control products. We've added in uh, the food grade and the stainless motors into that brochure. And then the website itself, we've got brand new product pages. There's one product page for the food grade motors, one for the stainless motors. And these are underneath the, uh, if you go to motion products and then Sigma 7 servo products, rotary servo motors, and then you can navigate straight to these, these new motor product lines. And then finally, we have OPT, uh, the, our online pricing tool, where we've also added the food grade motors and the stainless motors. The configuration of those, I, I'll show you that here. Here's the website. So again, if you just navigate over to products, 
motion products, and then rotary servo motors. Scroll down here to the bottom, you'll find the food grade and the stainless motors. And then you click on one of these, you'll see every here the technical supplements here, the brochures here, your models and ratings are all here. And then also your model number key is here. Anyways, everything's on the website. All the documentation that you'll need is on the website and in the technical supplement. Um, if we come over here to the online pricing tool, if you just click in here into Sigma 7 servos, you'll see these different categories for the stainless and the food grade motors. Again, you can just pop into these and this is the same look and feel as, as the OPT you've been using uh, for a long time. You just pick your motor size, go over here to cables and choose your extension cable size, and then your amplifier, you choose your amplifier type. So it defaults to the Mechatrolink amplifier, which you'll see again, the specific uh, Y mod that's specific to this motor is pre-configured for you. If you want to choose some other type of amplifier, an EtherCat, you know, you just choose that and it, it builds your part number. And then again, all the accessories that go along with that system are over here in the accessories tab. So just quick and easy to configure these systems. Again, the amplifiers ship with everything configured specifically for your motor. So your customer won't have to do anything. They just open up the package, put it in their cabinet, and it's good to go. As far as stock goes, um, we did order a considerable amount of initial stock to kind of get the product up and up and going. It's about 300K worth of motors, uh, 65 motors. And we will build on to that as we get kind of customers coming onto this product. So I would say as you get some new business, please give us that feedback. Let us know if you're gonna have repeat business and we will kind of build that into our forecast so that uh, you know we're gonna be ordering motors, not just based on what we think we're generally gonna sell, but we'll be ordering motors specific to your, your opportunity. Um, so please feed that, feed that information back to us when you do knock down a, um, a new opportunity and we'll, we'll work on that to, to get more stock in place. At the beginning here, if we do not have enough stock for whatever you would need initially, I mean, I think we should for like the first machine or so, we should have enough for you. But if we don't, the standard lead time from Elwood on the motors is six to eight weeks, which is not that bad considering delivery from every vendor at this point in time. So six to eight weeks to get a new motor if we're completely out and we don't have any in the pipeline. And so that is it for my presentation. Um, yeah, I mentioned that this would be a short one. Yeah, so um, Tim was asking about why there's so many variations of the amplifier. Every motor, specific motor model number. So if there's a break, there's, there's one amplifier. If there's not a break, there's another amplifier. Each specific motor has a specific parameter file. Uh, for all the attributes of that motor. So we have a specific one for each individual motor. So yes, there is a there is one Y mod part number for each specific motor. And you'll see here that if you look at, you know, for this first one, the Mechatrolink, the EtherCat, Sigma 7 SIC, and the Sigma Logic Compact, the Y mod is actually the same. They're all the Y20002 um, because they're the same motor, just different different amplifier servo pack. Uh, but yes, each individual part number has a, has a different motor model number. So hopefully that's not too confusing. Again, we do, it, it automatically is configured for you in the online pricing tool. So you don't have to worry about getting the wrong one. Just configure that, put it onto your quote and send it to your customer. Another question about the part numbering and the motors. The part numbers are the same as the standard Elwood motors with one exception. Um, the white painted motors, there is a short suffix after the KEN here that um, is additional on the, on the actual nameplate. We just kind of cut that off because the, they're all, they're all those final four digits are all the same for the motors that we're purchasing. So we, we cut that off to make the part number smaller and for it, our uh, ERP system will accommodate that a little better. Um, but other than that, the part, yes, they're just Elwood part numbers. Again, we're not, we're not really hiding the fact that um, we're getting these motors from Elwood. They are a uh, leader in making specialty motors in the industry, specifically the, these motors. Um, and we, we felt like we didn't really need to recreate the wheel. These motors are great. We've used them in a ton of applications with our amplifiers. And um, we're kind of just leveraging off that. As far as commercially selling these motors, so we do have a very aggressive multiplier from Elwood. Um, you know, they, they do quote these motors um, you know, on their own as well. Obviously, this is their standard product. 
Uh, I, I do feel good about the price point that we're able to hit with, with the aggressive multiplier that they've given us. And also, um, we've been working with Elwood for quite a long time with regard to, you know, sharing opportunity information. When they have a Yaskawa opportunity, um, even if even if our sales staff don't even know about it, they, you know, they're really good with sharing that information with us because, you know, they know that the customer is going to be wanting to use our amplifier and our other products. Um, so they kind of just pass that um, opportunity over to us and then, and then we kind of handle it from there. Um, I don't really see any kind of big conflicts um, from the commercial standpoint, but if you do run into anything, definitely talk to your Yaskawa salesperson. And, you know, we'll, we'll definitely be able to work through that. Another question about are the motors repairable? Yes, the motors are repairable. Um, they will go directly back to Elwood. Elwood will handle the, the return and the repair on those. Um, they do get the same warranty that all of our products do, uh, which is 18 months. You know, these will be repairable and, and handled under warranty just like any other Escala product. Uh, there's a question about Sigma Select, our sizing software. Um, the, these motors are not yet in Sigma Select, um, but we're hoping to get those added soon. Uh, if you do have any sizing issues with these, you can talk to one of our regional motion engineers or our uh, regional sales guys. They should be able to help you with the sizing. All the information that you would need for sizing is in the uh, <clears throat> Sigma 7 technical supplement. And there's a question about the amplifiers. Typically with amplifiers that have options where we're adding an option card, um, we build those to order. And that will be the same with, uh, with these amplifiers that I've, I'm discussing in, in this presentation. So we will, we're gonna order amplifiers and, and option cards to our forecast, right? So we'll stock the individual components and then as soon as we get an order, we build those up. It usually takes three to five days after the receipt of the order to get the, the amplifier and the option card built, relabeled, packaged, and then shipped out. Um, so same, standard practice from Miscala as far as amplifiers with options goes. So yes, those will, as soon as we get the order, they'll ship within a few days. Another question about the amplifiers, will they be stocked? Again, we are we're stocking the base amplifiers to you know our general forecast that we work with channel to create. Um, so yeah, we we do stock the amplifiers. It's just that to make these specific variations of the amplifier with the option card, we have to build them up before we ship them. So it takes a few days after after we get your order. There's a question about uh, motor replacement in the field. So it, with regard to the wake and shake procedure. So yes, if you if you have a motor go down in the field and you have to replace the motor, you're gonna have to do the wake and shake again. Um, I believe I believe that. I, yeah, actually, maybe. Yeah, yeah, you will. I believe you'll have to do that again. Um, again, this the wake and shake is gonna be temporary. We hope within the next three to six months. Hopefully not six months, but within the next few months, we're going to get um, that firmware update, which will kind of get rid of that whole procedure, but. For now, it is kind of a, a pain point that we're gonna have to deal with um, with regard to these motors. So I am going to close this webinar down. Thanks everyone who, uh, who showed up and uh, participated, I really appreciate it. Uh, if you have questions about this product offering, reach out to your regional salesperson. You can reach out to me via email or phone call. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll help you out with these if you have any other questions. Um, but yeah, just hoping this will help us penetrate more into the packaging in the food market. Thank you very much, everyone. Talk to you later.